So this is a weight is lifted from my chest. My left nipple is slightly lower than my right. My sur surgeon offered to fix it, but I declined. Its imperfection is a part of my uniqueness. It's part of the story that my chest displays. Slightly offset nipples over faded pink and white scars. To create my chest, the surgeon put me under general anesthesia and ran two long incisions underneath where my breast lay. Those incisions allowed him to lift up my skin and remove my nipples, breast tissue, and excess fat. After he had moved all the tissue he could, he then trimmed down my skin, laid it back on top of my chest wall, and then measured where my nipples would be placed. Male nipples are set up farther apart and lower on the chest than female nipples. There's a lot of nipples in here, just so you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> he trimmed my nipples and sewed them back onto the skin before sewing up the large incisions. The surgery took a little under two hours. 45 minutes later, as I hazily awoke from the anesthesia, I felt a rush of peace. Two objects that had caused a lot of trauma, worry, and distress in my life were gone, never to return. Before the surgery began, I was scared of the process and worried about whether I'd be able to handle further surgeries to align my body more fully with my mind. After waking up, I just sat there, amazed and wanting more. I was fascinated by the fact that in less than two hours, less time than it takes to watch a movie, my life had been changed forever. A burden that had haunted me since puberty was now removed. On the way home, I kept <coughs> lightly pulling my hand over my bandaged chest while saying to Michelle, my ex, I have a flat chest. I spent two weeks on a reclining couch as the large incisions and tender nipples slowly began to heal. After the stitches had dissolved, I began massaging my scar lines and rubbing my chest. A month into recovery, after a shower, I stood in front of the bathroom mirror and looked at my figure. The chest was flat, the scar lines were small and pink, and I felt male. Until I looked below the scar lines and saw my round stomach and wide hips. My body still lacked testosterone, and it made me uncomfortable. I reached over to the towel rack to grab a t-shirt, but the rack was empty. I realized I'd forgotten to bring a clean shirt into the bathroom to put on after I'd showered. I knew I could wrap the towel around my top half and run across the hall to my bedroom, but I decided it was my chance to walk around the house without a shirt. It would be the first time since I was a kid. I walked out to the family room where Michelle sat with her sister on the couch. I slowly strutted past them and nodded. My face was frozen with a goofy smirk and my chest was puffed out. They glanced up at me, and then Michelle went back to playing with her sister's chihuahua. They obviously didn't think much about my first adventure out without a shirt on, but I still felt exposed and slightly embarrassed. My chest became the part of my body that I desired being looked at and touched the most. When I felt beaten down, I looked toward my chest to find the strength and courage to move forward. Most important, it was a part of my body that touched another when receiving a hug. I love being able to hug someone and feel their body lay against mine in a way that validates the feeling of putting that last piece into an insanely difficult puzzle. Even with the pride of my chest had brought me, I still wonder how it would feel if my chest blended in with all the other guys. I ponder about what it would be like to take off my shirt at the gym, at the beach, or even in my own backyard and not worry about people looking at me with inquisitive expressions as they follow my scar lines from left to right. I try to push away these thoughts when they happen and take myself back to the symbolism of my body, the story that it tells, and the experiences that I've been through. In order to become more accepting of my scars, I asked my friend, who's a photographer, Fred Schneider, to take a picture of me without my shirt on. After an hour shoot, we selected one of the images from the hundreds he snapped and loaded it into an editing program. Fred clicked around the image, and within 10 minutes, I looked back to see a shirtless picture of me with a big T burned into my chest. Fred then added smoke around the T to make it look like a brand that ranchers use on their cattle. I looked at it and found a new piece with my scars, like Superman's S on the front of his chest. My scars showed people a part of my identity, but only when I would choose to reveal it. I continue to find comfort with my scars by reminding myself that if my body completely hid all parts of my identity, I might forget about what it feels like to live outside the norm.